With the current coronavirus situation in the UK, there is an even greater need for data about the experiences of the whole population. The Understanding Society COVID-19 questionnaire allows researchers to explore how the pandemic is impacting individuals, families and communities across the UK. The COVID-19 survey is an integral part of the main Understanding Society survey, also known as the UK Household Longitudinal Study, UK HLS. It is an annual survey of the UK population with wide geographic coverage. It started in April 2020 as a monthly online survey. The active sample members of all the samples of Understanding Society as of April 2020 were eligible for the COVID-19 survey. So, unlike many other COVID surveys which use new samples, the COVID-19 sample is based on a large and representative sample. And researchers can link the data from the COVID-19 survey to answers respondents have given in previous and future waves of the main Understanding Society survey. The COVID-19 survey data is available to researchers to download from the UK Data Service under study number 8644. The main UK HLS survey data is available under study number 6614. The COVID-19 study includes all members of the active sample aged 16 and older. This comprises those households in the main Understanding Society samples who participated in at least one of the last two waves of data collection, but excludes those who were adamant refusals or mentally or physically unable to make an informed decision to take part, and those with unknown postal addresses or addresses abroad were excluded. This resulted in 42,330 sample members being eligible. At the start of the COVID-19 study in April, the sample members were sent pre-notification letters explaining the purpose of the COVID-19 study, a short FAQ and details of the £2 participation reward. This was followed by invitations to the web survey by email and or SMS text or by post depending on the contact information on record. Those who were unable to complete the survey online were eligible for telephone interviewing. The web survey is run monthly up to and including July. Then from September, these will be run every two months. Those who don't have internet access were offered a telephone interview. The first CATI survey was filled in May and the next is planned for November to run in parallel. All fieldwork documents can be found on the UK HLS website. Further details on how the fieldwork was conducted is available in the user guide. Out of the 42,330 invited sample members, 16,379 completed the full COVID-19 April web survey and an additional 1,073 completed a partial interview. Those who didn't participate in the interview or at least completed the coronavirus module were considered to be respondents, while those who went on to at least complete the finance module were categorised as partial respondents. Beyond that were full respondents. Among those who completed the April interviews, full or partial, 15,835 had also completed the Wave 9 main survey interviews, so past information is available for them. COVID-19 web survey response rates are defined as the percent of individuals who responded to the survey, full and partial interviews, among those who were invited to participate. This was 41.2% in April and 40.2% in May. The COVID-19 questionnaire takes around 20 minutes to complete. This table summarises the core questionnaire modules, that is questions which were asked every way to track changes. In addition to this, the questionnaire includes rotating content carried intermittently and some content carried only once to adapt to the changing situation. A call for questions for the rotating modules was launched early on and received a large response from researchers. Some were incorporated into the next survey and some carried in future months. Here are some of the rotating and occasional modules. The user guide will be updated every month to include information about the most recent data collected. This figure shows how to read the questionnaire and how this information relates to the variables in the data. For each question, the questionnaire documents the variable name. This is how it will appear in the data file with some prefixes and suffixes to be discussed later on. Universe shows who was asked the question. Anyone who is not asked will get a value of minus eight for this variable. Source shows the source of the question. Here is the wording of the question text and the response options. The COVID-19 theme page on the UK HLS website details the latest updates to the survey and data available. Here you can find an overview of how the study works, questionnaire content and links to the user guide, the data and a mailing list for updates to the COVID-19 study. Next we will discuss the data files and their content. When you download the data you will see that it consists of four types of files, 
interest, child, sample and youth. The file names have a prefix of C to reflect the COVID-19 survey rather than the annual survey, with a second letter to denote the monthly weight, CA, CV, etc. The suffix underscore W denotes data from the web and underscore T from the telephone survey. The suffix underscore P denotes the youth paper self-completion survey. As the sample file is not wave specific, it has a prefix of X. Variables are named according to the questionnaire and follow a similar naming convention as the file names. The variable names also include a prefix of C and a wave prefix to reflect the wave in which they were collected. Questions originating from the main survey retain their variable name. If the original question has been modified, an additional underscore CV suffix is added to flag this, e.g. with the variable CE lonely. Derived variables provided such as the GHQ score have a suffix of minus DV. The stata code to create derived variables are in the appendix of the user guide. Responses to open-ended questions are reviewed and coded to the existing variable where answers map or recorded for future question use. Variables without prefixes are stable characteristics from the annual survey. These include the sample design variables, PSU and strata, socio-demographic information such as sex underscore DV, birth e, and race cell underscore DV. Variables with prefixes I underscore to K underscore are from the annual survey ways 9 to 11. Modified questions include changing the reference period months to year, adding response categories, changing question wording, individual to group questions. Where these questions have been modified, the source information documents what has changed. For some questions, respondents are asked to select all that apply from several responses. These multi-coded questions are available in the data as a series of variables, one variable for each response which are coded as one when mentioned and zero when not mentioned. The responses are recorded in the variables seen here, in CareWho 1, CareWho 2, to care who ate, and so on. Missing observations are recorded in the same way as in the main survey, using negative values rather than system missing. In the web survey, respondents are shown response options. In the telephone survey, interviewers record this spontaneously when said. The data collected from the survey is included in the ingress file. So the data collected in the April web survey is called this, while the file containing data from the main web survey is called this. The file containing the questionnaire data from the main telephone survey is called this. These are individual level files with each row being uniquely identified by PIDP and can be linked to each other and to any main survey individual level file using PIDP. In addition to this, some additional variables have been included in these files, such as sample design information, PSU and strata. Some background information copied across from previous waves of the annual survey, such as year of birth, ethnic group, whether born in the UK, interview outcomes for ways 9 to 11. Variables created from the COVID-19 survey questions to make it easy to use, such as the GHQ, Likert and Casenet scores from the 12 GHQ questions and survey outcomes, whether this is partial or full interviews and weights. These are the earnings and income variables available in the interest file. This table is also included in the user guide. Earning variables are top coded to reduce risk of identification of respondents. There are likely to be only a few respondents earning large amounts. So individuals who earn more than 4,000 net per week were grouped together and identified with a value of five weekly top coded in the period variable. Household earnings were top coded when the difference in the household and individual earnings exceeds 4,000 pound per week. The variables related to household size and composition, HH comp A to HH comp E, Count the number of household members in the different age groups. The highest category with more than 100 observations becomes the top coded category with all higher category values recoded to this. For example, if CA underscore HH comp A includes 65 observations for the category value 3, then the variable is recoded so that all values above 2 are recoded to 2. So this variable then has three values, 0, 1 and 2, where the label for 2 is 2 and above. As the frequencies from these variables will be different across the variables and waves, the value at which the top coding occurs will be different. The COVID survey doesn't include the HH grid that is used to check household membership in the annual survey, so household identifiers are not included, but adult respondents from the same household would have completed separate individual interviews. 
To identify those respondents who belong to the same household, you can use the household identifiers I underscore HIDP to K underscore HIDP and interview outcome variables I underscore outcome to K underscore outcome from the last three waves of the annual interviews wave 9 to 11. The interview outcomes will tell you the last wave of respondent was interviewed in the annual survey and the household identifier from that wave will help you identify the individuals the respondent was living with them. The variable CW underscore aid underscore DB identifies individuals living at the same address. While living at the same address does not always mean living in the same household, you can use this and the household identifier from the last interview to identify individual respondents in the same household. Beta weights were released in April and May 2020 with continued ongoing refinements of the weighting models. Use this weight to analyse responses provided in CW underscore indress underscore W by COVID-19 survey respondents to get population estimates for UK population at the time of wave 10, 2018 to 2019. This weight is a product of the main annual survey's wave 10 cross-sectional weight with an additional adjustment for differential non-response to the COVID-19 study. The weight sharing method is used to create weights for those COVID-19 respondents who do not have a weight in the wave 10 annual interview data. In previous waves they were given a weight of zero. We highly recommend using the weight provided with the data. A discussion on why you should use weights can be found in the main Understanding Society user guide. To create estimate standard errors adjust for the complex survey design using the variables PSU and strata provided with the data files for each format. The example file is a crossway file that contains information about the sampling process. It is an individual level file that includes information on respondents and non-respondents. So each row is uniquely identified by PIDP and there are 42,330 rows of observations. The X sample file includes information from past waves of the main annual survey and is updated each month to include information about the survey implementation process and outcomes from the latest COVID-19 survey. The child file contains information on homeschooling in wave 1. In wave 4, questions were also asked on special education needs for children aged 5 to 17 and the strengths and difficulties questionnaire for children aged 5 to 11. The data collected from parents about their children was extracted from the ingress files and transformed to a child level file. This is also available as W underscore S child. Note this information was not removed from the ingress files. To identify unique children and their Understanding Society PIDPs, children were linked to the main Understanding Society survey by their dates of birth and parents' dates of birth and parents' PIDPs. Although the homeschooling variables were rooted on the question, do you have any children aged 18 or younger in your household for whom you are the parent or guardian, who are currently enrolled in a school or college, a range of people answered this question, including children over 16 years answering for themselves and siblings, as well as one or both parents and a range of relatives. Variable suffixes are used to identify the person who reported it. So the answers to each of the homeschooling questions are provided in 11 different variables, one for each type of person who could have provided that information. This table summarises the suffixes used to distinguish data provided by different people. For example, in the ingest file, these variables show if a child is still attending school provided by each adult who said they had children under 18 in the household. In the child file, this variable is whether the child is still attending school provided by the mother. Again, in the child file, this variable is whether the child is attending school provided by the father, and so on. The youth file contains the answers to the paper self-completion strengths and difficulties questionnaire that was sent out to sample members aged 10 to 15 in July 2020. The file includes the identifier of the child, PIDP underscore C, and the answers to the 25 SDQ items. In addition, the file includes these variables. The Understanding Society COVID-19 data can be linked to the annual Understanding Society data SN6614. Here are the dates of the fieldwork and release dates for each wave. So wave 9 is the latest available wave of the annual interviews with fieldwork conducted in 2017 to early 2019. In order to bridge the gap between the latest data from the annual interviews and the COVID-19 data, we have made interim data from the interviews conducted in 2019 available with the COVID-19 data. These are from the WAVE's 10 Year 2 interviews and the WAVE 11 Year 1 interviews. Note this data only includes those sample members who completed the COVID-19 survey and their household members. That is, they do not include data for all Understanding Society respondents. When you download the COVID-19 survey data, you will find a folder called Main Stage Data 2019. 
That folder includes these files. Note that data from these two waves have been combined into one set of files. The Understanding Society naming conventions use the letter J with wave 10 and the letter K with wave 11. As these files include information from both these waves, their names have a prefix of J, K underscore. The file names also include a suffix underscore CV to reflect that these files do not include the data for all Understanding Society respondents. Note, in these data files, each individual only appears once as the data included for them is either for their 10th or 11th wave interviews. The new variable JK underscore wave shows whether the data included for any person is from their 10th or 11th interview. You can link the individual level files using PIDP. All combined variable names have a prefix of JK underscore to reflect that these are combined versions of variables from the 10th and 11th waves. Similarly, if a question was asked only in wave 11, then the value of this variable for all those who had completed their 10th interview in 2019 is missing, so a value of minus 12 is assigned. If a question was asked only in wave 10, then the value of that variable for all those who had completed their wave 11 interview in 2019 is missing, so a value of minus 13 is assigned. These are the list of files for the COVID-19 survey. Please note that although the first telephone survey was run in May, its questionnaire was the same as for the April survey and so in most cases should be used with the April web file. In some cases where the same questions were asked in April and May surveys, the May telephone survey data can be used with the May web survey data. Weights for both types of analysis are provided. Since the study started in April 2020, additional data files have been added throughout the year. These include the May telephone data, the child data with questions asked in July on special education needs for children aged 5 to 17 and the strengths and difficulties questionnaire for children aged 5 to 11. The youth paper self-completion survey on strength and difficulties questions completed by children aged 10 to 15. The data set also includes information collected just before the pandemic in January and February of 2020 and are available as fed forward variables. It also includes data files which include main annual survey data collected from the COVID-19 survey respondents and their household members in 2019. As the coronavirus situation in the UK changes, the COVID-19 survey will continue to gather data about the experiences of the whole population. Sign up to the mailing list on the COVID-19 theme page to keep up to date with the study as it evolves.